after d4, d5, and g3. As mentioned in the previous video, black goes on with bishop f5. So we're going to refer to this opening as the Catalan. Because if you follow this channel, you're a d4, d5 player. I mean, I'm also going to cover d4, knight f6. I've also made a video about the king's Indian. But for that, you got to keep a bit patient as videos will be coming in the future. So after bishop g2, e6, knight f3, e6. So we're going to be obtaining this type of structure, white castles, and now knight d7. We've done this exact beginning in the previous video of the Catalan saga. However, after knight d7 and c4, as you remember, the move now is h6. In the previous video, we went through knight c3, obviously, and everything that happens next. In this video, we're going to go to the very popular queen to b3, targeting b7. The response here is the following, queen to b6. But here, there's two options. Either c5 is popular, attacking the queen again, or queen swap. We're going to look at both of them. Let's start with c5. Now, here, we immediately take the queen, and we double up the pawn on the b-file. You might argue that this has allowed the white rook now to be in an open file and be developed and you will be right that rook is developed but at what cost well the cost is very simple white no longer has a pawn in c4 meaning that our d5 pawn is there to stay forever and soon enough we'll be preparing the thematic e5 remember when when the opponent has like a pyramid type of structure like this you always want to try to smash the pyramid from the bottom of it. So this is the most backward pawn of our opponent. Yes, he still has the e pawn, which can push to e2, but that will penalize the like, the dark square bishop. The dark square bishop isn't going anywhere on this diagonal because we can just kick it away with g5. So either way, we even with e3, after e5, played in the right moment and take take maybe, white will have a backward pawn on d4, which will be our future target. So black to move now, our move is g5 already. And after knight to c3, bishop to g7. So of course we need to rush the development. Now here we're threatening to take this pawn. We can play g4 attacking the knight and take the pawn. So let's see if white plays, well, okay, if, black, if white plays anything, it's like knight d2, let's just do a stupid thing. Okay, bishop takes pawn, just simple as that. So if white plays b4, which is kind of the only good move here because you know, knight e5, there's double attack on e5. The thematic knight h4 is not possible because of the pawn. e4 cannot be pushed because you got two attackers. You can't play really e3 because it's locking this bishop in. So you can't play rook to b1 because of the bishop. There's not much to do. Yeah, you can argue maybe right rook e1 or something like that. But okay, let's look at rook e1, like normal move. Okay, now here you simply play, g play g4 and you remove the knight from the defense over d4. So after knight h4 attacking the bishop, you simply take the pawn and you this is coming with an attack on c5. This pawn is not protected and the center belongs entirely to the black player. Don't worry about losing the bishop in f5 because you, you take back and there's nothing for the white player. You're up a central pawn. In this position, we're going through b4. Now, you can't really play g4 with the idea of taking in d4 here because the pawn in c5 is defended by the pawn in b4 and you're too backwards in development i mean not really not too much but you still need to develop this knight and the rooks are not connected you still need to castle and you don't want to do that and after knight h4 attacking the bishop if you think you can just go on with the same plan as before with bishop d4 this is a less effective move because this bishop just grabbed the pawn yeah that's true but after knight takes and pawn takes white has this sacrifice knight d5 and after pawn takes and bishop takes, it's not like anything special. I mean, the position is evaluated like slightly better for white. It's not like black is lost, but think about it. White has the bishop pair. Black's development just doesn't work. And white's rook is already better than black's rook, stopping us from being able to really move it because we can't really... Bishop b7 is coming, for example. Rook b8 is not really safe. It allows the involvement of this rook. So let's not do any of that. So once again, in this position, b4, what's the correct move now to go on? a6, right? Let's stop the annoying b5 and then potentially next b4 coming with the dismantling of our queen side, especially because our king is unsafe. So if b5 comes now, which is a very interesting move because it's actually very strong, and that was the whole plan of the white player and one of the very few things that he can possibly do in this position, we play knight e7. Of course, we can't take the pawn, although we needed to put more pressure over b5. Now the idea is to castle and then we will be able to take the pawn for free. So after pawn takes in c6, of course, we don't want to take the pawn here because then we will be in one of those annoying situations where we can't really move our pieces anywhere and the opponent just has more space to exploit, you know? 
knight a4, knight b6 for instance. So here we just take with the knight and we have double attack over d4. So if white just plays this silly move like bishop d2, whatever, just take with the bishop. And so after e3, let's look at e3. We haven't looked at e3. Black finally castles. And after bishop development, black goes on with g4. So the knight has to move knight h4, thematic attacking the bishop, bishop to h7. We need to read the bishop pair we have no reason to exchange it also this bishop is tremendously good so let's look at this idea f3 this is obviously the idea of opening the rook because that's the only square that's the only file where white can actually use the rook from and also get rid of this annoying g pawn black goes on with b6 we it's time to start trying to dismantle this annoying white scent b4 is not possible because you can take it for free and we're just threatening to win a pawn for free so after pawn takes and knight takes back it seems like we gave away a pawn pawn takes in g4 white is now able to play a move like knight f3 potentially knight e5 later on depending on how the game goes and also as a rook and open file however black goes on with knight to c4 attacking the bishop and after white's best move bishop to c1 defending the pawn and avoiding the swap black goes on with knight to a5 and the other knight is also joining the game of course b4 doesn't work to kick the knight away because of knight to b3 should be able to place a knight on e3 after a swap with the knight in c1 the knight will be a monster in there so here the best move according to the engine because knight b3 is a threat anyway the best move is knight sacrificing d5 because after pawn takes and bishop takes the bishop is attacking the rook black's best move is bishop to d3 with an attack on the opponent rook and now two options we're going to look at before we move on to the next line rook to d1 to save the rook or taking our rook let's see how the end game will look like so if bishop takes our rook then we take back and now black is better he's got the bishop pair and also we're up material I mean, it's a more comfortable endgame, to be more accurate. We're still targeting the rook. So after rook to f2, for instance, knight to b3 wins material. This is a fork. And the rook can't move away because of the bishop. So knight b3 remains a strong threat. White's best move would be rook to a4 here. And that still allows us to play knight to b3. Such a cheeky move because we're even refusing to take the rook immediately. So after rook to e1, saving the rook and putting more defense over the square e3, Black goes on with bishop to f8, attacking this crucial diagonal with the threat of knight b6, obviously. Position is evaluated like minus 4 or something like that, and yeah, there's nothing to do for white. The, you still have a threat of taking this bishop and then taking this pawn. There's nothing left to do if, if white pushes e4 with the threat of developing this bishop and simply knight takes in e4 is safe to play. Bishop e3. None of this works. You've got these three minor pieces in the opponent territory. You can do whatever you want. Knight c2 will be the winning move in this in this case. In this position, we went through bishop takes in a8. What happens is if white just saves the rook for the moment? Rook to d1 with an attack on our bishop while still attacking our rook in a8. This looks like the best move, but still, black plays bishop to c2 attacking the rook. And after rook to e1, rook a to d8. Now we're saving our rook. And now how to go on here? Well, if, if white tries to win a pawn by playing bishop takes then knight takes back and then rook a6 it looks like white has a pawn and a bunch of other pawns plus the past pawn to claim a potential good endgame but actually not because after bishop d3 there is no compensation for the white player black has the bishop pair and an extra piece yeah it's down four pawns but still we have this strong attack over d4 and even e3 there's nothing to do here we're literally threatening to take the pawn in e3 anyway uh, the rook cannot take back because bishop d4 pins the rook to the king the bishop cannot take back because there's an attack on the rook so from the start after d4 d5 g3 bishop to f5 so bishop g2 e6 knight f3 d6 so the familiar pawn structure against the catalan castle knight d7 and after c4 h6 so after queen b3 and queen b6 we look earlier we went through c5 what happens after instead queen takes in b6 now we take back with the pawn we we're the ones with the rook on an open file so after the following move which is pawn takes in d5 the idea of the white player was of course to force us to take back with the e pawn because we don't want to take with the c pawn due to the b6 b7 double isolated pawn so we have to take with the e pawn and this slowly reduces the control over the square d5 that we have. White in this type of game, the Catalan game, the main motive of this stupid annoying opening that they all play just because some super grandmasters do and make chess a very boring game is to play knight d2, knight c3, right? Knight like this, knight d2, knight c3, 
uh, rook e1 and then they push e4 now that's that, that's basically all they know that's all they do because they can't be bothered playing sharp so let's let's see how to tackle all of this knight, knight c3 knight g2 f6 developing a knight and after rook to e1 we play b5 this is crucial because we need to start removing one of the attackers over the square e4 right we know the plan we just mentioned that knight d2 e4 where there will also be the attack of the bishop over e4 and white will certainly be able to take that square so b5 is crucial because we want to remove one of the defenders of that square with b4 so what happens if white plays e4 right away let's look at this and then we're going to look at the best move which is a3 to stop b4 from happening although there's a surprise after that so anyway e4 we have to take and after knight to h4 attacking the bishop why should be able to recapture this pawn with an attack you know the rook is coming from the open file our king is not castled yet so what to do here we have to retreat the bishop to e6 because well we, we will normally go to h7 it's thematic but we will go to h6 in this case because white has the possibility to attack our king with the rook so after knight takes back in e4 black continues with bishop to b4 attacking the rook and now a few things can happen so if white wants to stay on the file while keeping this threat going on for example then rook e2 but we're also going to look at bishop to d2 blocking the attack actually let's start from bishop to d2 developing this looks very normal but still we are going to take and now obviously knight taking in f6 with check is met by knight taking back and white has just done a piece so the white player has to recapture knight takes back in d2 we have already neutralized white's attack now we can castle long and black is better okay although it looks like a crazy castle but look nothing's gonna happen now black is still better than white because white has an isolated pawn in d4 which will be the target of the game so let's look at the best way and most aggressive way of white to continue it looks like a4 is an obvious move coming now because the rook is gonna open up and you wanna smash the queen side where our king is still we take here surprisingly rook takes back and now the best move is knight to b6 guarding also the check square and stopping any idea of doubling up rooks and ever coming to a8 white's best move is rook to b4 saving the rook from the knight but now we play king to c7 to protect the knight and after the knight goes back to f3 rejoining the game black continues with rook to a8 conquering the open file white has two isolated pawns never forget that so black is going for a comfortable win in the end game. knight to e5 this is just sample moves uh, try to understand all you need to do is try to understand the ideas the motives and the thematic moves at the end of the day there's no way we can actually predict what will happen but if you remember the plans then anytime you face the Catalan, you know what your approach is going to be like black now goes on with rook h to e8 i'm going to look at two options here uh, if white tries to bring the knight to e4 you know try to maybe knight to c5 maybe play knight takes f6 the idea of smashing and doubling up isolating the black pawns or just any other move here try to remember knight e4 here you just take and this rook is very powerful over this rook which is not protected and the funny thing is that white cannot connect his rooks in this game due to the isolated pawns in his situation so we're going to ex exploit that in our favor now white cannot take back with rook in e4 because rook check only move bishop blocks bishop h3 is checkmate to follow so after bishop takes in e4 f6 attacking the knight the knight will have to move either way we're going to be pinning the opponent bishop so let's say knight g6 either way any other move a bishop f5 there's double attack on the bishop right the bishop can't move because then rook takes with check we're winning the end game if white protects it with the pawn like f3 or maybe pushing the pawn to allow the rook to defend it either way uh, you're just gonna take in g6 you're gonna take the knight in this case because then you still have an attack on the rook so you might be wondering here instead of knight g6 what happens after knight to d3 defending the rook well bishop to c4 the bishop is protected by the knight and you're threatening to win the knight because if the bishop takes back you can take the rook of course king f1 to protect the rook in e1 is not possible because the knight is pinned because you can play something like rook takes and after rook takes back bishop takes knight with a fork you're winning material uh so after the best move according to the engine which is knight to c5 obviously the knight is now defending it's another defender to the bishop but still this doesn't really change much because now you'll play f5 and you're winning material so in this position earlier we went through knight e4 and pretty much what the kind of situation that 
block can get into so you don't want to start swapping pieces simply because in the end game these two isolated pawns d4 and b2 will be the very reason why white shouldn't want to simplify this game white's best move according to the engine is rook to c1 so black now continues with knight f to d5 attacking the rook rook to b5 best move kind of the only move if you think about it because there's this very strong bishop that we have in e6 black continues with rook a2 starting the inevitable infiltration over the second rank so now white goes on with knight to d3 best move to protect the pawn however black goes on with doubling up the rooks and we're just dominating the end game so don't worry about this type of move because this actually happened against me and I over worried in this situation. Here you can just take the rook. There's nothing afterwards. Nothing really can happen. Uh, there's no particularly strong discover checks. So after bishop to e4, which is the best move according to the engine, which gives the black player potential escape since uh, the white player potential escape since white knows we're, we're about to go down with the rook. Black goes on with rook a1. And now here he cannot take because take then rook takes with check. After the king moves, we're going to win the rook for free. So here the white's best move according to the engine is rook to c5, doubling up the rook finally, saving the rook from the pawn. However, we still take. And after take back, black's best is rook a4, starting finally to target the weaknesses, the isolated pawn. Let's look at two moves before we close this line. Knight b3 to defend the pawn doesn't work because of knight f6, which attacks the bishop and the bishop is attacking the knight in b3. So the best move here is knight to c5, Black's best knight is rook to b4, targeting the square b2. This looks like a very strong move because it kind of messes up our endgame winning chances. Knight takes and after pawn takes back, we have an isolated pawn. We don't have that amazing bishop anymore. The game is quite open, so however, we're actually just fine. Now nothing stops us from winning the pawn in d4. If white plays knight f3 defending the pawn, we have the pawn in b2. So let's just go make a recap. After d4, d5, g3, bishop f5, bishop g2, we play the familiar pawn structure, knight f3, c6, castle, knight d7, c4, h6, and after this move, which is the topic of the day, queen b3, queen b6, we're looking at when they take in b6. We take back, and after taking in d5, we have to take with the e-pawn, knight to c3, knight to f6, rook to e1, and now the crucial move, b5. Remember this type of move, right? If you don't remember the exact move, the exact, the exact line doesn't happen. Remember that the plan of the Catalan is to play this knight d2. The knight is in c3 and the rook in e1 with all, all of them and the bishop in g2. All of them have the goal of playing e4 successfully. So b5 is a thematic move to annoy the knight in c3. So let's give a look once again at that line we were looking at before where... White plays, we're, go we're going to look at the best move, which is a3. But let's look at, once again, at this line, e4 straight away. So you take, and after knight h4, you save the bishop, we set to the square e6, for the reason of the rook being there on the e-file. So after knight takes back, black continues to bishop b4. Earlier we went through bishop to d2, and that nullifies the initiative of the white player. So let's look at rook e2 now, trying to keep the initiative alive. Black continues with castling, obviously we gotta get rid of this potential pin. So here you have a threat of simply taking the pawn in a2 for free. This is gonna give birth to another easy endgame where white has an isolated pawn in d4 and an isolated pawn in b2, whereas black has no pawn structure weaknesses. So after a3, black continues with g5 attack in the knight and after the only move, knight to f3. Well, it's not the only move because actually white can take the knight, but let's look at this. But basically what do we wanna do here? is bishop to c4 attacking the rook the rook can't go back because of the other bishop and also remember this bishop in b4 cannot be taken that means if the rook moves away from the protection of the knight we're going to take the knight and this pawn cannot really take a bishop so that means after bishop c4 white is forced to take the knight in f6 so instead of looking at this line let's go back just a couple of moves we went through g5 here so instead of playing knight f3 let's just play the knight takes f6 and uh, right away because that has to happen, right? Either way, knight takes back, and now the knight goes back to f3. So it's the same stuff. Now bishop to c4. Okay, so that was going to happen anyway, except this time the rook can move along the rank anywhere because it just doesn't have to protect the knight. Well, the same thing was literally happening in the previous move, I mean, in the previous line. Except in this case, the knight is not there, 
Well, after a swap, anyway, the rook could have played rook e5, so I'm gonna show you through this line. Rook e5, knight to g4 attack in the rook, and after rook to e4, these are the best moves. f5, and now white's best move is knight to e5, so if we take the rook, white can take back, but that still is the best move. And pawn takes, and then knight takes, knight, and now black is just better. After king g7 protected the pawn in h6, bishop takes pawn in e4, there is no compensation. Black plays bishop to e6, best move, and we're going to close the line here because we managed to achieve what we wanted. This is white having played the best possible moves, but we up the exchange, and we're attacking this knight over here, the knight can't really move to e3, for instance, because bishop e1 is a strong threat. Uh, either way, position is evaluated by around minus 2, and this is to assume that white will have played engine moves all the way up here in this specific line, but still black wins. Oh, and by the way, earlier we went to rook e5 in this position, after I mentioned that the rook could have moved along the line. So let's say rook to c2 here, this doesn't change anything, because you can still trap the rook. Bishop d3 is deadly, rook can't go anywhere, as you notice. So it's pretty much the same stuff. Right, so the last recap, and then we will close this video. g3, bishop f5, bishop c2, so we've got the Catalan on the board, knight f3, and the familiar bone structure. So castle, knight d7 c4 h6 queen to b3 queens now facing each other queen takes pawn takes pawn takes in e5 i mean d5 we take back and now knight c3 knight f6 rook to e1 and now the crucial b5 so let's not go this time through the immediate e4 and let's go through a3 which is some sort of preemptive move that uh, white can play as soon as this bishop the dark square bishop is developed then White will know that he will be able to keep the knight in c3 more stable. However, it's so good that we play h6 here because now this gives this bishop very few squares to go to. That makes sense. However, let's quickly mention this move, right? As mentioned before, knight to d2, right? This is the typical motif of the Catalan to play e4. Now, here we play bishop to b4. The reason is simple. We want to pin this diagonal, these two knights here, because when e4 actually comes, at the end of all the swaps, these knights won't really be able to move without the threat on the rook. So if, if e4 comes, we can take it. And after knight takes, well, now we castle, obviously. We can't really take take because rook can take in e4 with check. But what happened in this situation is that now the pawn in d4 is already isolated. And we have a literally identical situation to something we've seen before. So you know how to deal with this type of situations, white's got nothing, position is slightly better for black. So let's finally look at this last line, a3, this position, okay, the black black's best move is bishop e7, and after knight to d2, finally preparing e4, in this case it looks like the white player will finally be able to play the thematic move that characterizes the very opening he decided to play, so it looks like finally the white player is going to play the Catalan theme, black castles, and now e4 is coming. But how do we deal with this? Okay, we take, obviously, and now after knight d takes in e4, we're not going to look at knight takes, knight c takes, because this leaves the knight in d2, it's kind of more passive, and does not allow the development of the light dark square bishop. I mean, things just don't change much at all, it will just be slightly better for white to take with this knight. We're still going to be playing everything on this pawn in d4, right? That will be our target. However, let's look at this. Knight takes in e4. Now black goes on with b4, threatening to take the knight. Well, we are misplacing the knight anyway. The knight has no access anywhere. So this is now forcing white to take the knight in f6 with check. Obviously, we have to take with the bishop because the rook is attacking the bishop right now. So we can't take back with the knight. Bishop takes and now we're putting more pressure over the pawn in d4. And after the knight returned to e4, which is something that would have transposed if the knight had taken before, for example, something similar. And now after the knight goes to e4, threatening to take our bishop pair, black simply takes the pawn in d4, and it's got an advantage. White's best move according to the engine is rook to d1, which seems to be skewing two pieces. Uh, obviously, he had, white can't just develop this bishop anywhere, let's say bishop d2, attacking the pawn, whatever, you know, you can just take in b2, and then... The, after the rook moves, then you can take the pawn in a3 as well. Right? The rook moves, let's say, whatever, you can take the pawn in a3. It's completely over. In this position, rook to d1 is the best move. Black simply goes on with c5. Position is evaluated minus 2 or something like that. 
So it's just winning for black. 